they said it couldn't be done. The world's experts, the industry's veterans and the skeptics all agreed, this was a challenge too great, a leap too far. The whispers in the corridors of power and the chatter in high-tech labs all echoed the same sentiment, impossible. They said it couldn't be done. Not just once, but over and over, as if repeating it would make it true. The doubt was everywhere, etched into the faces of engineers written in the body language of every meeting and spoken aloud in boardrooms across the globe. They said it couldn't be done. Headlines blared warnings, analysts shook their heads and news anchors questioned whether China could ever catch up in the race for advanced chips. The consensus was clear, without the West's most advanced machinery, China's chip ambitions would hit a wall. The world believed that the technological gap was simply too wide to bridge, especially with the strict controls in place. The key barrier, extreme ultraviolet lithography or EUV, made only by ASML in the Netherlands. This single company held the keys to the future of chip making and the world knew it. These machines are the crown jewels of chip making, etching impossibly tiny circuits onto silicon. Without them, the next generation of chips, smaller, faster, and more powerful, would remain out of reach. Without EUV, the world believed 7 nanometer chips were out of reach for SMIC. The industry's best minds insisted that, without access to this technology, China's most advanced foundry would be stuck making yesterday's chips. SMIC didn't have EUV, and thanks to sanctions they weren't getting it. Every shipment was scrutinized, every piece of equipment tracked, and every loophole closed. The message was clear. The door was shut. Western leaders felt secure. Control the tools, control the future. By locking away the most advanced technology, they believed they could dictate the pace of progress, keeping China a step behind. By locking China out they thought they'd frozen its progress for a generation. The world expected China's chip industry to stagnate, unable to move forward without the West's blessing. SMIC was dismissed as stuck in the past, making only basic chips. The company was seen as a relic, unable to innovate, destined to produce only what others had already mastered years before. So when rumors surfaced of a breakthrough, they were laughed off. Industry insiders scoffed, journalists rolled their eyes, and competitors barely paid attention. The idea that SMIC could leap ahead seemed absurd. How could a sanctioned company, cut off from the global supply chain, possibly leap this technological chasm? The odds were overwhelming, the obstacles immense, and the resources limited. It seemed like a story destined to end in failure. The world watched, certain in its judgment, unaware that the impossible was about to happen. In the shadows, away from the headlines and the laughter, something extraordinary was taking shape. The stage was set for a moment that would shock the industry and rewrite the rules of the game. The story of SMIC's struggle began with a single pivotal decision made in the heart of Washington, D.C., a decision that would send shockwaves across the globe and reshape the future of technology. In 2019 and 2020, the U.S. government placed both Huawei and SMIC on its notorious entity list. This move effectively severed their access to critical American technology, software, and components. The U.S. didn't stop there. It leaned on its allies, urging them to follow suit, creating a coordinated effort to isolate China's tech giants from the world's most advanced innovations. Suddenly, the global supply chain, once a symbol of international cooperation, became a powerful weapon. Shipments were delayed, contracts were canceled, and entire production lines ground to a halt as the world's most advanced chip-making tools were locked away. SMIC, China's leading chipmaker, found itself cut off from the lifeblood of modern semiconductor manufacturing, the latest tools, cutting-edge software and the expertise needed to push boundaries. Their clean rooms, once bustling with activity, now stood eerily quiet. The embargo was not just a policy, it was a calculated move designed to choke China's ambitions in the tech sector, to slow its rise and keep it dependent on foreign innovation. SMIC was left scrambling, forced to rely on outdated equipment and domestic alternatives that lagged years, sometimes decades, behind the global cutting edge. The gap between SMIC and its international competitors seemed to widen with every passing month. Industry analysts were quick to predict SMIC's decline. As TSMC and Samsung surged ahead, unveiling ever smaller, more powerful chips, SMIC appeared destined to fall further and further behind, unable to keep pace in the relentless race for technological supremacy. The message from the world was clear, you can't innovate in isolation. Without access to the global ecosystem, SMIC's future looked bleak and the odds seemed insurmountable. But the immense pressure had an unexpected, even paradoxical effect. Instead of breaking under the weight, SMIC's engineers and leaders found a new sense of purpose and unity. Rather than collapse, the crisis ignited a fierce wave of national determination. Teams worked around the clock, driven by a shared mission to overcome the odds and prove the world wrong. The embargo, intended to stifle progress, instead became a rallying cry. Across China, calls for self-sufficiency echoed through factories, research labs, and government halls. 
the nation united behind a single goal, technological independence. In response, billions of dollars were funneled into China's semiconductor industry. New fabs broke ground, research funding soared, and investors lined up to support the next generation of chipmakers. SMIC, once just another company, became a powerful symbol of technological resistance, a beacon of hope for a nation determined to chart its own course. With every familiar path blocked, SMIC's only option was to forge a new one. The journey would be difficult, but the stakes had never been higher. The world watched, expecting failure. But SMIC and China's engineers were about to prove that even under siege, innovation can find a way, and sometimes adversity is the greatest catalyst of all. To grasp SMIC's achievement, you need to understand the global chip race. For years, TSMC and Samsung dominated, armed with EUV machines and massive R&D budgets. They produced the world's fastest, most advanced chips. SMIC, by contrast, was a distant competitor making older, simpler chips. Sanctions widened the gap. TSMC was perfecting 5 nanometer chips while SMIC struggled with 14. The world saw this as the natural order, only a few could play at the frontier. SMIC was relegated to the lower leagues not even considered a contender. The giants battled for supremacy while SMIC was expected to fade into irrelevance. But behind the scenes SMIC was working on something that would upend the status quo. The world's attention was elsewhere. SMIC's secret project was about to change everything. The first sign of something extraordinary came from a smartphone. In late 2023, Huawei launched the Mate 60 Pro powered by a new Kirin 9000S chip. How could Huawei, cut off from TSMC, have a high-end processor? Analysts tore down the phone and examined the chip. What they found shocked the industry. The chip's features matched a 7 nanometer process. SMIC, supposedly stuck in the past, had built it. Skepticism gave way to disbelief, as more experts confirmed the findings. The impossible had happened. SMIC had joined the exclusive club of 7 nanometer manufacturers. The question was no longer if, but how. How did they bypass the EUV wall? The Kirin 9000S was more than a chip. It was proof of a technological revolution. SMIC's secret wasn't forbidden hardware but mastering the tools they had. While the world watched for black market machines or secret shipments, SMIC's real breakthrough was far less dramatic, but far more impressive. They learned to push their existing technology to its absolute limits. Chip making relies on lithography, printing circuits onto silicon with light. Imagine it as a high-tech version of shining a flashlight through a stencil to create intricate patterns, except these patterns are measured in billionths of a meter. For years, the industry standard was deep ultraviolet or DUV, a process akin to drawing with a thick marker, good for broad strokes but not for the finest details demanded by modern chips. EUV, or extreme ultraviolet, is the ultra-fine marker, capable of drawing impossibly thin lines. But SMIC only had DUV. Their solution? Multi-patterning. A clever workaround that let them mimic the precision of EUV, even without the actual machine. Instead of drawing the whole circuit at once, they broke it into layers, printing each separately and stacking them. Each layer required perfect alignment, and even the tiniest error could ruin an entire batch of chips. It's like building a detailed image from overlapping stencils, each one adding a new level of complexity and detail. The process demanded patience, precision and nerves of steel. This method, DUV multi-patterning, is incredibly complex and error-prone. Every extra step multiplies the risk of mistakes, and the cost of failure is high. Most companies abandoned it for 7 nanometer chips. It was simply too hard and too expensive to be practical. The world moved on to EUV, leaving DUV behind. But SMIC had no choice but to perfect it. With no access to EUV, they doubled down on DUV determined to make the impossible work. They pushed their DUV machines to the absolute limit, refining every step, every alignment, every exposure, with relentless precision and discipline. It was a brute force approach born of necessity not luxury. Every chip was a testament to their persistence and ingenuity. Over time they became master artists with the tools they had, turning limitations into strengths and setbacks into opportunities for innovation. The impossible became possible through sheer engineering grit, creativity, and an unwavering refusal to give up. Multi-patterning DUV was only half the battle. The real challenge was aligning each layer with microscopic precision. At 7 nanometers, the tiniest error can ruin a chip. SMIC's breakthrough? Quantum-assisted manufacturing. They developed ultra-sensitive quantum sensors to monitor the environment in real time. These sensors detected minute disturbances, vibrations, temperature shifts, electromagnetic interference, and enabled instant corrections. This innovation allowed SMIC to achieve unprecedented accuracy, 
while others focused on better hardware SMIC perfected the environment, they didn't just steady the pen, they reinvented the hand that held it. The final piece wasn't hardware, it was software. Making a 7 nanometer chip with DUV multi-patterning generates mountains of data and complexity. SMIC turned to advanced AI and machine learning. Their AI analyzed data from every step, learning to spot and correct subtle patterns that led to defects. Computational lithography ran millions of simulations, tweaking designs before a single wafer was printed. This software-driven approach squeezed every drop of performance from older hardware. SMIC built a software-defined fab, proving brains could outsmart brawn. They didn't need the fanciest tool, just the smartest way to use what they had. News of SMIC's 7 nanometer chip sent shockwaves worldwide. Western tech boardrooms were rocked, EUV's protective moat had been breached. The assumption that China would remain technologically dependent was shattered. Huawei, once hobbled, was now a resurgent rival. Governments scrambled to reassess their strategies, sanctions had backfired, fueling a massive innovation drive in China. The breakthrough inspired other nations to pursue technological sovereignty. SMIC's story became a playbook for self-reliance. The West's complacency vanished replaced by urgency. Research into next-generation chips accelerated. The chip race had a new formidable competitor. SMIC's 7 nanometer chip marks a turning point. The era of technological supremacy by a select few is over. The old world order, where access to critical tools could be controlled, has been broken. SMIC's journey rewrote the rules of global tech. The lesson ingenuity and resilience can overcome even the toughest barriers. Denied the easy path, SMIC invented a new one, building a more self-sufficient base. The future is now multipolar. New innovation hubs will rise, driven by necessity. The global tech landscape will be more diverse, competitive, and unpredictable. The chip war is far from over. It's entered a dramatic new chapter. In this new era, the winners will be those with the most innovative ideas and the will to overcome any obstacle.